how these the show. Thank you very much. Give them another round of applause, guys. Come on. Fabulous. Amazing. Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing tonight? Not bad. And I'll ask that again. How are we all doing tonight? That's a bit better. There we go. Well, a good evening and welcome to the Pride of Forby Awards 2019. Amazing, guys. So you probably didn't expect to see me tonight because David Heath was supposed to be here, but unfortunately he cannot be with you. But I'm your host this evening, Hannah Wilson, and I'm joined by the wonderful, the amazing Alex Crawl. Now, Alex lives in Forby, guys, and has been resident for five years. He is and was a gold medal winner in the Invictus Games playing wheelchair tennis. How are you doing, Alex? Thank you. There we go. Happy day, Alex. And you know what? I didn't even know we had the Formby Pride Awards. Did you not? No. Well, Only in five years, didn't even know we had them. Well, there you go, Alex. Right. Here we are. Happy day. He knows now, doesn't he? He knows right. now. Right, guys, so it is an amazing night put on fantastic achievements from absolutely every single one of you. We hope you have a great night and you all deserve it. But before I start, I've got to say, you all look gorgeous. Now, I'm going to invite the lovely Maria to the stage. Come on, Maria. Now, Maria, look at her. She's like, oh, I'm not feeling this. Now, Maria, you look fabulous. Come and join us on stage because Maria is, guys, that's right. Give her a round of applause. Chair of the Parish Council. And she'd like to say, if you want. Do I? Oh, on behalf of the Formby Parish Council, I'd like to thank you for all coming. I'd like to thank all the sponsors that enable this event to go on. And it's obviously all about recognising what people do in our local community. Uh, a lot of them touch other people's lives, if it's raising money, or they might have survived something in their life. Um, it's all about recognising our community and the people in our community. Um, I hope you enjoy yourself tonight and um, thanks to everybody and especially the, the, the choir. They were really good. G-Force and obviously to Anna, who's going to be our compere and to Al, Alex who's going to present the awards. I'll leave you to it and enjoy your food. Thank you Maria. Give her a massive round of applause. Amazing guys. So we're going to start off, we're going to get the ball rolling and we're going to start off with the very first award. Now this is the Extra Mile Award and it's sponsored by Red Star Brewery. Okay. So Ian, like all Formby library staff provide excellent customer service. They'll spend time with difficult inquiries. His staff training is excellent as are his entire team, and they go well beyond their admit of the jobs by helping the elderly with IT problems and taking the trouble to find details of items not held by Sethi. He has taken some vulnerable to a location that we're not familiar with to ensure they arrive safely, not to mention him providing hot drinks and a few cheeky biscuits, you can't beat that can you, to the public on all occasions. He is an example of someone who goes beyond what his job entails, and we thank him very, very much. So the Extra Mile Award goes to Ian Edgerly and the former library team. <laughs> Ian, are here? Shh. Anyone here to come and it? Fabulous. Carry on the round of applause, guys. Congratulations. Come and join us. We've got Alex with in the award. Fabulous. Beautiful. Now guys, we definitely need a picture with you, so you've got the amazing photographer there who's going to take a snap. Either side, guys, either side. I'll step down. Cheese. I'd like to say a few words. I'd like to say a couple of words. I wasn't expecting this actually, so... <laughs> To speak to you, glad to hear. Um, I think as the more accept one of the more acceptable faces of Sefton Council, it's been an absolute pleasure to work for, uh, for 12 years in Formby. Um, and also thanks to the great staff who have just been the absolute best, and they're the ones who go through the extra mile and just chipping on a little bit. Um, and so just a big thanks to everyone. 
um, especially the parish council, all the people who put up with our little things that we get up to and join and uh, just come and use the library in general. Uh, we're here for the form of the we're here for the community in general. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Acts, any words? Are you all good? Yeah, just to say, I've been a library myself with my little boy, and every time I've been in, you've been more than uh, happy to help me and uh, get me to where I need to be. So, thanks very much, and keep doing what you're doing. Fabulous, guys. Massive congratulations. Thank you so much. Wealth management. So, this is a long one, guys, so bear with me. Absolute essay. Are we ready? <laughs> so, my nomination is for an organisation rather than a singular person. In my 22 years of teaching, I have never come across or had the pleasure of working with such a talented, dedicated and compassionate group of people. The role of the PRU is to support and educate some of the most challenging and vulnerable young people in Sefton. It doesn't sing in the press like the other secondary schools in Sefton about the successes and achievements. However, I think it is about time that the work of such a school within Formby is praised. A school and organisation without, with all the mainstream schools, could not operate without its support to help pupils overcome difficulties in their lives so that they successfully return to the mainstream school or gain qualifications they need to, to move to college, training or employment. Despite the fact that many pupils do not always join the school as willing, eager learners, teaching staff rapidly rebuild pupils' confidence and self-belief. They pay close attention to pupils during lessons, frequently reshaping tasks to maximise pupils' learning. As a result, people say they exceed their own expectations of what they can achieve. The school offers pupils of support to address their individual health and well-being needs. They quickly identify pupils' needs and build bespoke programmes of support to improve pupils' health and well-being, including sexual health and drug awareness as well. This support makes a positive difference to pupils' engagement in education. Pupils who join the school have been permanently excluded or at risk a permanent exclusion from their previous school as a result of their poor behaviour. They quickly establish good relationships with these pupils which are built on trust and mutual respect. I cannot pick one single member of staff or teacher so I would like to nominate the staff slash organisation of Oakfield Campus which plays integral and almost invisible role within the education sector of Sefton. It takes a special type of person and to work with and change the lives of these children that many schools cannot cope with or have given up on. So guys, this is the Teachers of the Year Award and it goes to Impact PRU Oakfield Campus. Come on up, guys. Beautiful stuff, well deserved. Keep the applause going. Well, Alex is going to present the award. Massive congratulations. Well deserved. We are going to get a cheeky picture for you guys, so smile for the camera, please. Smile. I've got to break it, Anna. I've got to break the silence. Beautiful. Frame that. I just wanted to say that. You know, it's, it's a team effort. We talk about the teachers, but it's the support staff as well, the TAs, the youth workers, everyone who works within uh, the PRU. I mean, I've got to say also, John Hinks, who can't be here today, who's the centre manager for the Key Stage 3 PRU at Oldfield. I mean, I really, you know, he should be here today. He should be, should be saying this now, to be honest. I mean, I'm lucky enough to work with John and oversee all our centres. But, I mean, it, it really is a pleasure to actually work at the, this place and actually work with some of the most vulnerable pupils and see real improvements in their behaviour and their well-being and getting them to move back into mainstream and also onto college and higher education as well. So, uh, thank you very much. Amazing. Well, you may not know this, but what I'm saying, I actually worked in a field for a little bit. Only 
managed about nine months because the kids actually thought that I was one of them. Before the, before the kids expelled me, he said, I was on the streets. But no, I swear to God, it's, it, it's one of the most challenging environments I've been in, you know, to try and guide these young people who are, they're on the wrong path, aren't they? And I, I think you, you guys are doing a, a great job of getting them back. I like the background though, do you? I do. It's nice, isn't it? Right, moving on guys. The Sports Coach of the Year is sponsored by B&B Construction Form B LTD. Will is a well-known swimming teacher in Form B. Teaching sessions at Form B Hall and Sports Direct, he always has a smile on his face and is amazing with the children he teaches, making each session fun. He always ensures that each child's individual needs are met and all sessions are inclusive of all. He has so much passion to ensure that children learn how to swim and are safe in the water. And this clearly shows in each of his lessons. He is by far the best swimming teacher around. He has an amazing rapport with both children and the parents who bring them every week and a unique way of bonding with each and every child, hence gaining their complete and utter trust in their swimming teacher. Every child is treated individually and never forgets their stories, their holidays, siblings, laughs, a true form hero in every single way. Will's passion and enthusiasm to deliver an amazing Learn to Swim program is amazing and he teaches many children on a daily basis across Sefton and Merseyside. He is known for building confidence with even the most timid of children who very quickly flourish under Will's tuition. Will goes above and beyond is an inspiration to so many people. He is loved by parents, carers and children alike. Will always supports Supports, he doesn't. Will always supports other local businesses and is a fine example of someone hardworking and caring to our community. He also gives a lot back by supporting local fundraising events and charities. To be recognised by Pride of Formby would make his day and it would also be thoroughly deserved. So the sports coach of the year award goes to Will Kildare. <laughs> Massive round of applause. Come on up, Will. Come on, guys. Keep it going. All this is to me now. Well done, Will. Congratulations. Would you like to say any words, Will? Fabulous. Yeah, I'm just a bit shocked, to be honest, but... Uh... Thanks so much for everyone and, you know, a lovely kind word. I'm sorry, I'm just really flabbergasted. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks to the council and everything. Thank you. Amazing. This is going to be the last award before the interval as well. So the Young Fundraiser Award is sponsored by Harbord Electrical LTD. So, Charlotte and Evie took time away from their GCSE studies during Year 11 to plan and deliver a fundraising campaign to raise money for Drop for Drop, a charity that uses funds raised to install wells in developing world countries to enable people living in poor communities to have access to clean water. They made a compelling pitch to the head teacher, convincing him to support a non-uniform day. He consented on the understanding they delivered assemblies to all the year groups to raise awareness among their peers. The girls planned extremely well, thoughtful and engaging, an assembly allowing students to actively participate and challenging them to consider the impact of the worldwide water wastage crisis. In addition, they wrote a letter to parents informing them of a non-uniform day and the charity it would support, coordinated a very popular and well-received cake sale and arranged various other fundraising activities in the week of the non-uniform day, including a raffle with prizes that have been donated by local businesses. 
In total, Charlotte and Evie raised nearly £1,500, which will pay for a well to be installed. <laughs> that is just incredible. Yes. Most importantly, guys, they made a lasting impression with their sense of compassion, enthusiasm and drive. Their concern for others and commitment to global citizenships and attributes that truly make them stand out from that crowd. So, I've got to say it, the Young Fundraiser of the Year Award goes to Charlotte Russell and Evie Scott. Come on up guys, massive congratulations, keep the applause going. Beautiful stuff. So of course, amazing. We'd like to say thank you to Formby High for allowing us to fundraise and support in it. Yeah, um, thanks. Um, we're just glad we got to raise awareness for the charity Drop for Drop because a lot of people don't know about the well water crisis when in fact there's 663 million people in the world without access to clean water right now. So we were just glad to make it a useful impact with that. Thank you. Well done, guys. If you just get together for a photo, amazing stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Food? Yeah. Is everyone going to have a few drinks? Yeah. Hey, you that cake, that little baby cake. How nice was that? That was really nice. Right, I'm going to roll with this mic for now and go. Absolutely. Now, guys, before we start with the second section of awards we just want to say a few thank yous okay so a massive thank you to, to Claire and Jill the parish clerks they've done the food that's right give them a round of applause helping out basically we just could have lived without you girls so thank you very much also a massive thanks to G Force Choir and Steve Cook for a beautiful opening I was really enjoying that guys I was bobbing along I was like woo living life and of course, a massive thank you to Alex. You've been awesome, Alex, for agreeing to present the war tonight, so thank you. Beautiful stuff. So we're going to move on now to some more special awards, guys. So here we go. This next one is the Adult Fundraiser Award, and it's sponsored by Formby Tool Hire. Works tirelessly to raise money and encourage people to join the Stem Cell Donor Register, which saves lives around the world. Kevin is a stem cell donor himself. Kevin's wife received a stem cell transplant from an anonymous donor after she, was, she developed leukemia four years ago. And just months after, Kevin's brother was diagnosed with a rare blood disorder and Kevin was able to donate his own stem cells to save his life. Kevin donates many hours of his own time setting up, running donor drives and encouraging people to join the register. He uses social media to great effect and his energy is never, ever ending. Kevin, who is the founder of Stem Cell Scousers Charity, lives in Formby. He has worked tirelessly during 2018 to raise money for blood cancer charities. Raising awareness of blood cancer and the need for stem cell donations really does save lives and makes a huge difference for those patients and their carers who are affected. Last year, Kevin coordinated a group of willing volunteers from the local community and has raised several thousand pounds for the Anthony Nolan Trust. This has mostly been through public, public connections and collections at major retail outlets. He has also been active in supporting the work of the South-based West Lancs and Merseyside Melonia support, which has several members based here in Formby. So guys, I'm going to give this award. It's the Adult Fundraiser of the Year, and it goes to Kevin Dunn. Come on up, Kevin. Where are you? Massive congratulations. Keep your applause going. You're looking dapper tonight, Kevin. You're looking dapper, I must say. Come on up. Alex is going to present the award for you, Kevin. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Kevin, have you got any words, anything you'd like to say? Okay. Of course. Well, this is a nice surprise, everybody. <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to win anything tonight. But I have to say, this is a team effort from Stem South Scousers. It's not just me. Wow. 
Put the mic up, Kate. Okay. Oh, right. There you go. Say that again. We've got the wife, Mary. Uh, wife, Mary, son Christopher. We've got Jim Brown from Sefton Cancer Support. And David from the Myeloma Group has had to go. He was not feeling too well before. And all the other volunteers that we've got locally who live around Foley, it really is a team effort. Um, and this is for the team. Amazing, Kevin, amazing. Another massive round of applause. Teamwork makes the dream work, of course. Alex, would you like to say a few words? It's more you, Kevin. I, I didn't realise you can donate stem cells. Can you? How tricky is it to go and donate? Um, it's actually very easy. It involves, after the initial tests that uh, match you up as a donor and a recipient, it's basically four hours lying on a bed in the hospital, connected up to what's called an apheresis machine, which is it's very similar to a kidney dialysis. It's just small amounts of blood, about 250 millimeter, uh, millimeters rather, uh, at a time are processed and the T cells are removed from your blood, which is the immune system. Isn't it? I just love it. Flashing the door. Well done, Kevin. Take a seat. Another round of applause for Kevin. So congratulations. First class. A nice in London. I mean, have you done first class on the train before? Yeah, I snuck in for you. He sent me back out. You do? You snuck in? Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. Didn't, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I think you need to teach me how to. Do you know what I mean? Just be brazen. Go for it. Just go for gold. Yeah. Do you see what I did there? Amazing. Okay, moving on guys to the next award. It is the Courage Award and it's sponsored by Little Alka Parish Council. In August 2015, Dave contracted bacterial meningitis, which left him fighting for his life in a coma. He spent two weeks in hospital and then several months recovering and regaining strength after such a dreadful time. Dave has also, sorry, Dave has always been a keen sportsman, a member of Formie Tennis Club and Southport Rugby Club. After several months, he slowly began to exercise and play tennis again. However, in 2017, he decided that it was time for a new challenge. A challenge that would not only continue to aid his own recovery for the disease, but raise money to support the fantastic charity Meningitis Now. He began training for a charity wrestling match, dedicating several hours a week to his training. The match took place in November, watched by all of his family and friends, amazed and brought to tears by his amazing recovery and show of strength two years after surviving meningitis. He was chosen to be the main event and wrestled and beat WWE's T-Bone, winning the title. Come on, that deserves a round of applause. Absolutely. So Dave himself set a goal, raising £1,000. However, he smashed his own goal and raised an incredible 2000 £242 for meningitis now. Absolutely amazing. They have showed enormous courage and strength of character to turn such a dreadful experience into something positive, helping others by raising awareness of meningitis. Dave has raised a total of £7,000 over the years before and after his illness for several other charities also. Movember, we've got Queen's Court Hospice and Ronald McDonald House. All his family and friends are so proud of him and he is an inspiration to many. His story can be read in Southport Visitor dated the 10th of October 2017 and is also on the Meningitis Now website. So guys, massive round of applause. The Courage Award goes to Dave Hemsley, everyone. Come on up, Dave. Absolutely incredible. And I'd also like to invite Leo. Where are you, Leo? You're the sponsor of this, so come on up, Leo, as well. We'd love to have a photo with you. 
Congratulations, Dave. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. We're just going to have a quick photo, guys, to either side. Say cheese, it's got to be done. Smile! There we go. It's getting better, isn't it? Uh, I think all I am actually is lucky, to be fair. My wife did a wonderful thing by saving my life. It was only a few hours away, apparently, according to the doctors. So I think I'm actually quite lucky. They're the courageous ones, because I was the one that got to stay off school for a few months. I got to stay at home and watch all the James Bond films, sitting on the sofa whilst becoming very obese. But that's a different story. But they were very much the courageous ones, because I would have been absolutely horrendous, because my brain and my body were not doing what I wanted them to do. And as a sports person, that is incredibly frustrating. But for me as well, like, as part of my uh, attempts at getting exercise and fitness, I've started playing for the tennis club, as I say, I've actually played you, Alex, down at Formula Tennis Club, you've had a good game, and I think you've actually battered me. There you go. Fitness hey. moment, there you go. That's amazing what you do, by the way. Um, but yeah, so that, and I got back playing rugby, which is absolutely fantastic, but again, wrestling was absolutely ridiculous, and uh, I got to wear spandex in public and things like that, but never thought I'd do that. I lost five stone, but the whole process was so frustrating before that, but I'm actually now, I mean, to be how lucky am I to actually be able to still play rugby, I still play tennis, I've actually gone back to karate since I've retired from professional wrestling now, can't do that properly, but... Uh, so I'm hopefully going to get my black belt before I'm 45, so that'd be quite nice. So again, I am just lucky because, to be fair, I get to see my little girl who's over there. Hello, Holly. That little sweet one there, smiling away. So I, when she was two, I think I was told that as the paramedics were carrying me down the stairs, she was standing at the edge of the cot shouting, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And literally, when I woke up from my coma, there was a little picture of her next to my bed, and that was something I was really aiming to see her. And it took me about a week before I could see her again. But my wife's been so supportive. My, my uh, father-in-law, Sue and Jeff, uh, they're over there as well. My mum and dad are on holiday in Madeira, but I've had so much support to help me do what I do. And I'm actually fitter than I've ever been. And the best thing about it all is, because my brain still is not quite doing what I want it to, it means that if I even have one alcoholic drink, I get a massive headache. So I don't even get to drink, so I don't even get hangovers anymore. But apparently, <laughs> people who do, uh, I say I get a headache when I drink, but apparently that's quite a common ailment these days, but there we go. Anyway, so I think I'm rather lucky, rather than courageous. And I'm sure there's a lot more people out there that far more courageous than I. But I do thank my wife and family and everyone for their support and this is just like, you know, it's wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful work, Dave. And it's So, uh, the next award, the Community Hero Award, is sponsored again by Little Alcar Parish Council. Maggie fits the title Community Hero admirably. She is very involved in all types of music, singing in several choirs and playing several musical instruments, including the guitar, the keyboard, and the organ. She encourages and persuades others to join her in the musical activities, and this year, she raised over 1,000 pounds for Queen's Court and Woodlands Hospice, carol singing around several sites in Formby, including the Cross House, Sparrow Hawk, and the Railway. She has done this for several years. Although she is, she is very busy with various activities and family, late on Christmas Eve, she was asked, still with the turkey to stuff and cake to ice mind, she would play the organ for Midnight Communion at St. Michael's Church as the organist was ill. She did. This is not her usual church, as she usually plays the organ at the Holy Trinity in Formby. Maggie never seems to say no to anything she is asked to do. Two or three years ago, she decided there was a need for somewhere for people to meet up, where they could sit and chat, have a cuppa, have a little chinwag, which meets Mondays and Thursdays every week in Holy Trinity Workshop. It's run by volunteers and attracts a regular group of mainly elderly who come to socialise and put the world to rights. Don't we all love doing that? Because I definitely do. So guys, the next award, the Community Hero Award, goes to Maggie Floodman. Give her a massive round of applause. Who is unfortunately unable to attend this evening. So we've got her daughter Katie, who is going to come up and receive the award. A massive round of applause for Katie and Maggie. Wow, amazing, amazing stuff. You know what, I love music. I love musical instruments, I wish I could do all that. Fabulous. Congratulations, smile for the camera so we can get a cheeky picture of you both. Smile! There we go. Would know that sums her up. She feels that the only way she is successful in doing all this is because of the team behind her. 
So she really thinks everyone should be getting this award, not just her. But she's a community hero, but she's my hero. She's the best mum, and everybody loves Maggie, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, massive round of applause. Next up guys, the Special Young Person Award is sponsored by Star Swimming Academy. Freedom is possibly the most exceptional student I have come across in 25 years. Despite a diagnosis of a rare muscle cancer in his final GCSE year, Freedom approached his final year at school with his chemotherapy treatment with a real determination to beat cancer and achieve the best set of results he could. On days when he was well enough to go to school, he would attend without a single complaint and accompanied by his fabulous smile. Not content with just achieving a phenomenal set of GCSE results, Freedom also masterminded his own fashion empire from his very own bedroom. Freedom has approached all aspects of his school career with real passion and enthusiasm, and this carried him through a very, very challenging year. We are hugely, massively proud of his achievements. So this next award, guys, the Special Young Person Award goes to Freedom Duran. Keep your going, Freedom, what a beautiful Come on up, receive this phenomenal award. Well deserved. Well done. Have a little picture, guys. Smile for that camera. Absolutely fantastic, beautiful stuff. Freedom, is there anything you'd like to say before you leave the stage? You're looking fab, by the way. Look at that jacket. Really nice. Um, I firstly just want to say thanks so much to Forby High and to Miss Blanchard. Um, Forby High is like a really um, close community and I didn't really realise that until I left, so thank you very much for that. Um, and also to uh, my family, especially my mum. Um, it's all the little things that you don't really see on the TV, like when you can't really get up to go get something to eat or when you just need help getting out of bed and things like that, so my mum was always there for me. Um, and especially my auntie and my uncle, uh, Carmel and Tony, they were there the whole time always visiting me and coming to get everything so I just want to say thank you to them and that sometimes it's not mainly the big things that you actually have the disease but more that you know you have something you are you can't get a shower every day it's once every four days and things like that so um, just thank you so much for this award it means a lot. You're clearly an inspirational bloke. Uh, you may not know this now, but in the future, I'm sure your story and how you got through that situation that you got through is, is going to help you do what you're going to do. So, are you going to make Clover line in the future? I already have to. <laughs> and is it sold in all good clothing shops? Uh, it was good, yeah, I've stopped it now, but um, it was good, Rob, so it's not good. Good man, good luck for the future, and well done. Well done again, Freedom. Absolutely beautiful. Keep your arms around the front of the guys. What a massive, massive inspiration. But we're actually at the final award of the evening. I know. That's it. Drum roll, right? Oh, 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 oh. It's happening, it's happening. Drum roll, please. Come on, come on. What a pity this. Your arms are going to get tapering. Right. This is the final award of the evening, guys. Um, you've all been amazing, but we're going to do all the thank you spiel after this. Um, but this is the last one, and the Lifetime Achievement Award is sponsor. Sponsor? Can't speak. We'll start that again. The Lifetime Achievement Award is sponsored by DevSec Global LTD. Now, before we continue, Alex here might have a little poem, and you can tell him where this is from. Explain all, Alex. There's no need to. I'll just go straight into it. Oh, you just went straight in. Okay, here we go. Okay, somehow I'm doing a poem. I'm... Just bear with me. <laughs> all village trees. For a hundred years, they've stood there, majestic and supreme. Enhancement to our village, a true arboreal dream. 
Through two world wars that flourished, growing stronger every day, lovingly trimmed and tender by the powers of yesterday. Then suddenly the bombshell from the present powers that be, who said those trees were dying, they must cut down every tree. Oh no, they're not, we shouted. They're flowered every year. Born conquers for the children. Our love for them is clear. Dead branches just need pruning. They'll live for years and years. Such haste, no consultation, aroused the public fears. With just one day to save them, the people all appeared. In the pouring rain we stood and stopped what we had feared. The next day the men came back again, and also so did we, and tried for an injunction and surrounded every tree. There'd been no proper survey, we got a short reprieve <coughs> and a statement from the council that all their men must leave. <laughs> and now we wait and wonder at the folly of it all and hope and pray our trees will stay so proud and strong and tall. We know there is no danger if dead woods <coughs> to be cut away, they'll thrive and grow and blossom for untold years each and every May. They're a splendid le legacy for a future still unborn, <coughs> nature's lasting treasures on every waking home. Now, Maria, can you remind me, who wrote that poem? Who wrote that poem? Uh, your next winner is mm. not going to give anything away. I'd love to pass it off as me, that wasn't me. <laughs> Did you mean, it wasn't me either. I'd like to say that as well. That was amazing. It's, it, it, those trees being caught causing hot controversy for uh, quite some time. You mm. know this. Mm. It's, a, it's a sensitive subject. Absolutely. But yeah, I'll do it right. Well, thanks for reading that out. Loved it. Okay, guys, so this is the final award of the evening. Joan is a well-known and tremendously respected person within the community and has been for many, many years. In many ways, she symbolises Formby and represents not only the people she has known <coughs> and written about in the past, but also the modern day Formby, about which she cares about so passionately for and does so much to protect. <coughs> Joan has kept alive the history and the spirit of Formby through her poems. Her historical reminiscences, including the village that was Formby, her slideshows to packed houses, and now her musical collaboration entitled My Formby, with her constant smile and abounding spirit and energy. Joan has recorded our community and fought many battles over the years to try and protect it, including most recently the campaign to save the village trees and we would like to read out a poem, we've already done that bit, that she actually wrote to save the trees. And today, this would be a lesser place without her continuous watchfulness and determined efforts. She really, truly is a champion for her community. So guys, the final award of the evening, please give a massive round of applause. The Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Joan Rimmer! Oh, careful, Joan. Here she is. Keep the applause going. Congratulations. Here, see you now. Well done, Joan. Beautiful stuff. Congratulations. Just a quick picture, Joan, if you will, to the camera. There you go, in front of you. Fabulous smile. Beautiful stuff. Amazing. Okay, Joan, uh, the stage is yours. You. I don't know what to say after all that. I can't believe it. I didn't know until I actually sat down at the table that it was a Lifetime Achievement Award, and I thought, well, it can't because I haven't finished yet. So, um, um, the, the actual news, we've been doing these things on and off for, for a long, long time, and I think I probably have more pleasure from them than anybody else. I've been very, very lucky indeed. I've had lots of help along the way from lots of very, very kind people. And the one thing that we're doing now, a new thing, it's not actually called my phone bee, it's called our phone bee. And one of my friends over there is um, Nick over there, Dominic. He and Steve should have been here. We do this mu musical show 
using some of my material, my poems and my slides, but quite a lot of their own material as well. And everything we do, we do for charity, and over the years it's raised an awful lot of money, many, many thousands of pounds. But that's thanks to the people of Formby rather than me, because if they didn't support all the things I've done, well, nobody would get anywhere, would they? And everybody seems to uh, like it all, and it's given me. I never thought when I began this in 1987, very, very reluctantly actually, that it would go on to do the things it has. And if I'd known, I would never have started. I'm rather <laughs> jolly that I didn't know because it's been absolutely marvellous. Congratulations, Jeremy. Now, before you go, I see got a few words. Sorry. So, Joan, clearly, um, you've, been, you know, you've worked really hard over the past couple of years. So, we are the next generation of Formby residents. What, what last words would you like to tell us um, for the future? Yeah, what, what can we do? I don't know really. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Uh, Formby's changed out of all recognition since I was born here. Way back in 1935, a long, long time ago. Just a little farming village then. So it's, they shouldn't be doing what they're doing now with all this building. That's the only thing I can say. So if you can stop it in any way, stop it. But I don't think you'll be able to. <laughs> Joan, we're going to do our very best. Thank, thank you. Thanks a lot. Congratulations again, Joan. Congratulations to absolutely every single one of you this evening. Um, I just want to say you really are all amazing and inspirational in your own way. So give yourselves a massive round of applause. Fantastic. Now we're going to do a few thank yous and then we're going to invite everyone up. So again, thank you to absolutely every single person involved here tonight. Well done to the Formby Parish Council, of course, for organising this wonderful event. Round of applause. Thank you very much to the bar staff selling your drinks and doing your stuff tonight. Everyone who organised the food, everyone involved, thank you very much. And of course, Maria as well. Now, everyone who actually received an award, an award, can you please come up on stage for one final photograph? So come on up, guys, with your awards, if you will, so we can have a cheeky little photograph with his name. Ladies down at the front, there we go. Gentlemen up here, I think. Come on up, there we go. Fabulous. Am I getting it? All right then. Shall I go with? No, I'll go with ladies. As you know, we've had a lot of thank yous tonight. Um, I won't repeat them all because they've been said a couple of times. Um, but I'd like to thank Hannah, who was our compare tonight, and actually only got the script a half past six tonight. And I think she's done a fantastic job. So I'd like to thank her and all of all. Again, I'd like to thank everybody, all, all the winners. I think it's very humbling and very well deserved to all our winners. And it's a way of recognising people in the community. I'd like to thank again the sponsors, because without the sponsors, it would be a lot more difficult to put this night on. Um, and hopefully next year, people will continue to nominate people in our community for an award of some description. I'd also like to thank Alex. You've been absolutely fantastic, Alex. Uh, and I have to say, at some stage, it's been like watching a comedy act. Yeah, and I've been like watching a comedy show with you too. So you bounce off really well from each other. So again, thank you for coming. I hope you all enjoyed the night. Hope you enjoyed the food. And we look forward to seeing you again next year with some new winners.
Enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you again soon. Good night.